Good evening. Good something. Hi. Hi. Good evening. We'll go with that. Good evening. Welcome to Zion Lutheran Church School and Preschool. We are happy to have you here on this beautiful day in February. Okay. It is the first Sunday, first weekend of Lent, which means we're underway. We had a fantastic Ash Wednesday service, well attended. People are itchy and excited to get back to normal, and we're close. We're so very close. So we are returning into Lent, a season that somewhat got cut short last year by this whole virus thing, so we're, we're going to get the whole thing in. We're talking Easter and Easter breakfast, and yeah, I'm excited. I hope you're excited too. So, Wednesdays, Wednesdays we meet here at 5.30 for um, fellowship time and supper. 6.15 we come into the sanctuary here and we have uh, Ash Wednesday or Lenten midweek worship. Our theme this year is return to the Lord. As our sin has walked us away from our Savior, how do we get back to Him? And so over these next seven weeks, we're going to keep with that theme. Pastor Paul will be giving us return to prayer this week. If you want to follow along at home, we have these daily devotions that are in the narthex there in a white basket. They follow our theme, daily devotions through Lent. Grab those if you so choose. For families, we have this return to the Lord Lenten family calendar every day of Lent has a different family style devotion. Um, all, the, all the school kids should have come home with one. If you are not a Zion school family, you can grab one. Those are also out on the Narthex table. Okay. Like I said, Wednesday, 5.30 meals, 6.15 worship. If you would like, we also have a 10 o'clock, 10 a.m. worship. It's really a chapel for our school kids, but we invite anybody and everybody who would like to attend. So it's going to be a little different, more child-focused than the evening service. But for those of you who want to come out during the day, you're more than welcome to join us. Okay, a couple weeks ago on the 7th, we had a voters meeting to uh, talk about moving the triennium, moving that, uh, the synodical meeting. If you'll see in your bulletin, it did pass by, by uh, a, a large margin. And so that means everything's moved back a year. We'll have our district meeting at the end of this year, and we'll do the synodical meeting, I guess, what's that, in 2023 or something along those lines. Closer to home, you'll find in your bulletin tomorrow after second service, we will be having a musician's meeting. If you have in your heart a desire for a strong music program here at Zion to grow in our musical worship, specifically with regard to our praise service and our praise bands, even if you don't play music, we want to hear your input. We want to know what the congregation is thinking. As many of you noticed, we've taken the last couple months off with the praise band to kind of regroup and see where we're at with that. We want to get that thing started again, but we need their input and we need your input. So if you're willing, please stick around after service tomorrow, after late service, as we talk about the music program, specifically our praise, praise and worship band. Last announcement I have, we went through Lutheran School Week a couple weeks ago. As their service project, there's always a service project with Lutheran Schools Week. We couldn't go off campus, so what we did is we had the kids gather a bunch of supplies and we put together, I'm not sure what Becky Aker was calling them, but they're helping bags. We have a lot of um, homeless and poverty in Rapid City, especially if you go downtown, panhandlers, that kind of stuff. And if you're anything like me, you're conflicted, right? You want to help, but you don't want to enable. So what can we do? And so our school has put together all these bags. It's got snacks, it's got socks, it's got water, it's got some hand warmers. Um, something to keep in your car so that when that person does come up and say, hey, do you have anything you can help me out with? Yes, I do. And you can give them this bag. So those bags are in the back there in the narthex. Feel free to take them, put them in your car, use them as you see fit. 
Roxy, would you like to talk to us about the blood drive? Well, just that in about a month, and I can't even remember the date, I think it's March 13th, or it's a Tuesday, and that's when the the 16th, which is a Tuesday blood drive in the narthex. If you have questions, if you'd like to sign up, and please sign up in advance so they know who's coming and how to prepare. Talk to Roxy Withy or Allison Flaherty if you two would like to raise your hands so that people will see you. Talk to one of these ladies and they will help you out. Anything else? Anything else? Great. Let's stand and greet each other in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Let me see it for our opening him. ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, the God who is faithful and just will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your presence and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. 
as a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all those sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue with the introit. We'll be said, spoken responsibly. I'll have the first line in the congregation, the second, and so forth. When he calls to me, I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. With long life, I will satisfy him. Because you have made the Lord your dwelling place. No evil shall be allowed to befall you. For he will command his angels concerning you. On their hands, they will bear you up. You will tread on the lion and the adder. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. When he calls to me, I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. With long life, I will satisfy him. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O Lord God, you led your ancient people through the wilderness and brought them to the promised land. Guide the people of your church that follow our Savior. We may walk through the wilderness of this world toward the glory of the world to come. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please be seated. Go ahead and grab your Bibles or your Bible app. We're going to start with Genesis chapter 22, James 1, and the Holy Gospel from Mark chapter 1. The Old Testament reading is from Genesis chapter 22, verses 1 through 18. After these things, God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, and he said, Here am I. He said, Take your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah, and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. So Abraham rose early in the morning, saddled his donkey, and took two of his young men with him and his son Isaac. And he cut the wood for the burnt offering and arose and went to the place at which God had told him. On the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place from afar. Then Abraham said to his young men, Stay here with the donkey. I and the boy will go over there and worship and come again to you. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on Isaac his son. And he took it in his hand, the fire and the knife. So they went both of them together. And Isaac said to his father Abraham, My father. And he said, Here am I, my son. He said, Behold, the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham said, God will provide for himself the lamb for a burnt offering, my son. So they went both of them together. When they came to the place of which God had told him, Abraham built the altar there and laid the wood in order and bound Isaac his son and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then Abraham reached out his hand and took the knife to slaughter his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here am I. 
He said, Do not lay your hand on the boy or do anything to him, for now I know that you fear God, seeing you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him was a ram caught in a thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up as a burnt offering in place of his son. So Abraham called the name of that place, The Lord Will Provide, as it is said to this day, On the mount of the Lord it shall be provided. And the angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time from heaven and said, By myself I have sworn, declares the Lord, because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will surely bless you, and I will surely multiply your offspring as the stars of heaven and as the sand that is on the seashore. And your offspring shall possess the gate of his enemies, and in your offspring shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because you have obeyed my voice. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle reading is from James, the first chapter, verses 12 through 18. Blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trial, for when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life, which God has promised to those who love him. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am being tempted by God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, and he himself tempts no one. But each person is tempted when he is lured and enticed by his own desire. Then desire, when it has conceived, gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is, when it is fully grown, brings forth death. Do not be deceived, my beloved brothers. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. Of his own will he brought us forth by the word of truth, that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. This is the word of the Lord. Please rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. We're in Mark chapter 1, starting with the ninth verse. Mark chapter 1. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth to Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. When he came up out of the water, immediately he saw the heavens being torn open and the spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, you are my beloved son, with you I am well pleased. And the spirit immediately drove him into the wilderness and he was in the wilderness 40 days being tempted by Satan. And he was, in, and he was with the wild animals and the angels were ministering to him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came into Galilee proclaiming the gospel of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise you, O Christ. Together we make our common confession of faith found in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in God.
please be seated. I invite the children of the congregation to come up for the children's message. No, Shane's not sad. Jensen's happy. You're what? Sleepy? Yeah, you got kind of sleepy eyes. You got kind of sleepy eyes. Can you guys, it's kind of hard, we've got all masks on, but can you make angry eyes? Let me see your angry guys. Let me see your happy eyes. You have, can you make laughing eyes? It's, I mean, this, is our, this is all mass practice. The laughing eyes. <laughs> what about super sad eyes? Super sad eyes? Now, have you been happy and mad and sad and laughing and tired? You've, all, you've been all these? But wait, I don't understand. How can you be all these things? How can you be all these things, right? There's only one you. How can you have all these different, all these different emotions and all these different faces? What's up, pal? What do you think? Your face changes. What do you think, Holland? Some people can be mean and nice and bad. And that's all the same person. It just kind of depends on when you get them. What about moms and dads? Can they be all those things? Yeah, have you been around mom when she's been all those things? Sometimes it seems like they're all those things all at the same time and you don't know what they're doing. Yeah. Now, are we made, easy question, are we made in the image of God? Isaac's shaking his head, yes. Yes, we're made in the image of God. So if we have all these emotions, we have, we're happy and sad, we're angry and mad, we're tired. You think God has all those too? You think he gets angry? Yeah. A lot. <laughs> yeah, you're right, Holland, he does. Do you think he's happy? Yeah. God is a, he, there's a lot to God. He's not just one thing. He's not just happy all the time. Sometimes he's sad. Because we sin, that's right. Kudos, parents. Good job. Yes, because we sin, and that makes him, that makes him both sad and angry. Oh, so angry. When we get in trouble, we go to our beds. But when we get in big trouble, we can't even get punished. God's got to send His own Son to get punished for us. Putting His Son on the cross, do you think that made Him... What do you think that made Him? I bet that made Him sad. And then three days later, what happened? He rose. How do you think God felt about that? Happy. God is a pretty complex God. He's got a lot going on up there, don't you think? But with all that, no matter how angry He gets... He always loves us. I think that's pretty cool, don't you? Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, there's a lot going on with you. You're happy and sad. You're angry and mad. You can be all those things, but Lord, above all, and through it all, you love us. You love us so much that you sent us your Son. We thank you in His name. And all God's kids said, Amen. All right, head back to your seats. We continue with our sermon. Hymn.
In the name of that crucified and risen Lamb, Jesus Christ. Amen. Just what kind of God do you have anyways? Jeremy just read for us our, our, our Old Testament lesson of the story of Abraham and Isaac. Where God commands Abraham to change the batteries in his microphone. <laughs> Talk amongst yourself for a minute. do you have? We read the story of Abraham and Isaac where God commands Abraham to take his son Isaac, this gift that he was given, take him three days out in the wilderness and plunge a knife into him to sacrifice Isaac, his son, for God. But I, it gets me a little confused because if you joined us Wednesday night for Ash Wednesday or Wednesday for Chapel, we talked about this gracious and merciful God. A God who is, who, is, who is abounding with steadfast love, who is slow to anger. I'm having a hard time wrapping my mind around this being the same guy. Scripture, we're, in Scripture we're told that God is angry and wrathful. He is jealous and punishing. From Abraham and other stories we find that God is a testing God who often tests his people in what seems like very cruel ways. But then Scripture comes back and makes the audition, aud, 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 audacious claim that he is both gracious and merciful. Just what kind of God do you have? I'm going to cut right to the final answer. You have both. You have a God who is a God of law and punishment. You have a God who is filled with gospel and grace. But it's this law and punishment idea that I want to focus on first. Because he is very, that is very much an aspect of the God that we serve. The problem is our culture, our society, and Hallmark and Hobby Lobby have done us no favors. Walk into Hallmark, Christian bookstores, or Hobby Lobby, and you will find gift cards and plaques and beautiful pinks and pastel purples with scripture verses from Song and Solomon and from Joshua as for me and my house written in beautiful beautiful script superimposed on a woodland background with a calm deer grazing in the meadow nearby it's probably in your home I know it's in mine it's right at the end of the hall Here are a few Bible passages that you will not find on Hobby Lobby shelves. From Joshua 6, 17. The city and all that is within it shall be devoted to the Lord for destruction. I see this superimposed over a picture of Minneapolis from this last year, burning to the ground. From Matthew 10, 34. The words of Christ. The Lamb Himself. Do not think that I have come to bring peace, but a sword. And I picture Jesus battle-worn, His face filthy, His hair a mess, His robe ripped to shreds, His feet and His legs, specifically His heel, heavily bruised while He holds a sword dripping with fresh blood. Don't think you're going to find that at Hobby Lobby. Revelation 13.5 The beast was given a mouth uttering haughty and blasphemous words and it was allowed to exercise authority. And I picture that same woodland scene only now that deer is being devoured by a multi-horned, multi-eyed, gruesome creature 
nastily devouring its kill while Jesus stands in the woods nearby giving his consent for it to do so. Psalms 137.9 Blessed shall he be who takes your little ones and dashes them against rocks. I'll let you come up with your own picture on that one because that's not one I want to think about too long. We don't like these pictures of our God. We, we prefer pictures of a kindly grandfather with a long flowing beard, with his son in his transfigured glory standing next to him or sitting next to him so little children can be upon his knee. And around them flutters a pure white dove, the Holy Spirit gliding overhead. That's the picture we like to see of God. But while you won't see these on Hallmark green cards or Hobby Lobby plaques, this is who our God is nonetheless. He is angry. He is wrathful. He is jealous. He is punishing. And he often puts us, his people, through very cruel tests. He is the God who promised to give Abraham and Sarah a child after so many years of being barren. And not only is this a, their child, but this child would usher in a whole new age. And through Isaac, Abraham would grow into a mighty nation. And then through Isaac, specifically his offspring singular, through Christ that would come through Isaac, all the nations of the world would be blessed. And then after raising this child for some years, God says, now take that child three days into the wilderness to Mount Moriah and kill him. Now can you imagine that three days? Parents, think about that. Walking along the road for three days with your child, staring at them, knowing what God has asked you to do. Tell me that's nothing but three days of mind-numbing torture. And tell me that's not cruel. I don't know if I could do it. Now God has not asked me to do that test, but he's asked me plenty of other tests, and he's asked you tests as well. The time when you've gotten laid off... Do you trust that God will continue to provide? Every time we walk in this building, God tests us. He says, I want you to give me 10% of your income. 10% of what I give you, I want back. Do you trust that that 90% that remains is going to be enough to live on? Parents. You may not have been asked to sacrifice your child, but our job is to work ourselves into obsolescence. Raise our children so that at 18 they will leave. And those of you who have been through it, those of you who are about to go through it with teenage children, can you trust that when they go out on their own, when they leave the nest, that God will provide for them as he's provided for you? COVID has been a serious issue in our country, in our world. Thousands have died, but thousands die all the time. Often they die before we want them to. Often they die, they're too young. Often they die, we say it's too soon. In the midst of that grief, in the midst of that heartache, can you still say, yes, Lord, I trust you. You are in control of all things. Because while he is an angry and wrathful and jealous and testing God, he is also a God who is in control of all things. And he is a God of gospel and grace. And in the midst of those trials, those are the easiest. That gospel grace, that loving aspect of God is the easiest one to doubt. It's the easiest one for the, the opponents of the church to attack. They ask questions like, would a loving God allow natural disasters? Would a loving God allow violence and war, disease and famine, rape and murder? 
Well, a loving God gets you laid off from your job when you're too young to retire, but too old to start over. Would a loving God take your child or your spouse or your friend before you were ready to say goodbye? Would a loving God test you in such cruel ways? What kind of God do you have, they ask. Or you ask. I know I've asked. Does that sound like a loving and merciful God to you? But he is loving and merciful, isn't he? The same God who commanded Abraham to take his son up to Mount Moriah, to sacrifice his son for him, is the same God who held and stayed Abraham's knife-wielding hand and turned his gaze to the ram stuck in the thicket. The same God who grew angry at Adam and Eve's flagrant and unforgiving, unforgivable sin did forgive them. He kicked them out of, the, out of the garden in his wrath. But what did he do as soon as they stepped outside of the garden? He clothed them so that they would be protected from the elements. The same God who had had it up to here with the southern kingdom of Judah and sent them off into exile to be controlled by the harsh Babylonians, 70 years later let them come home and gave them men like Ezra and Nehemiah and Zerubbabel so that they could rebuild their homes and their city and his temple. The same God who after it was shown that no amount of ox or lamb or goat sacrifices, no amount of bloodshed, could wipe away the stain of sin. No amount of, no amount of times of saying Hail Marys or Our Fathers or doing penance or saying I'm sorry or trying to be better or doing it right this time. No amount of our own work could pull us out. This same God did what He told Abraham to do. He took His Son and He sacrificed Him. There was no angel to stay his hand. And he did it. He did it out of anger and wrath. He did it out of punishment. And he did it out of love for you. Why do you do it this way? You ever ask yourself that question? Why did God have to do it this way? Why is it all this mixture of anger and love, wrath and forgiveness? Why does he test us in such seemingly cruel ways only at the last minute to stay our hand and provide his own sacrifice? I don't know. I don't have anything insightful or witty to say at this point. I don't know. I don't know why he does the things he does. But really, would you expect any different? The world that he created is complex. And from our perspective, nothing but convoluted. Would the God who therefore created that world be any less complex, any less convoluted from our point of view? You have a God who is angry and wrathful, jealous and punishing. You have a God who will test you at times in seemingly very, very cruel ways. Yet at the same time, you have a God who is merciful and gracious. You have a God who loves you. You have a God who sent His only Son, Jesus Christ, to die for you so that you could live eternally with Him. You have a God who provides. He's a complex and often at times very perplexing God. Just what kind of God do you have? To answer, you have the only kind of God, the only God there is. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And the peace which comes from this God, this Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, a peace which surpasses all understanding, I pray that it guard your hearts and minds 
and his sacrifice, his love, his son, our Savior, our Lamb, Jesus Christ. And all God's people said, Amen. Continue on now with the offering announcement. We can't pass the plates yet, but we're getting close. The plates are in the back on the tables in the narthex. We continue with the offertory. This week in our prayers, we continue to pray for Paul Lestro, who is in hospice. Audrey Sales, who is in the hospital with a broken foot. We continue to pray for Lyanne Guidel's mother, Lorraine, and her brother, Gary. They are continuing to be hospitalized with the effects of the COVID-19 virus. And we have a special prayer for Pat Shannon as he continues his battle with cancer and is contemplating the end of his fight. Are there any other prayers we'd like to bring before the congregation at this point? Seeing none, we rise and go to our Lord in prayer. Hear your people, O Lord, who cry to you on behalf of all people in need and through the blessed name of Jesus, that in the face of temptation and trial we stand firm in the strength of the Lord, who was tempted like us, yet did not sin. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. That we, be distracted, that we not be distracted by the voice of the devil and the allure of the world, but remember Christ's baptism into sin for us in our baptism into Christ clothing us with forgiveness, holiness, and righteousness. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. The great, that the Lord grant wisdom and obedience to our nation's leaders and to the leaders of the whole world, that peace reign between nations, and that the culture of violence end and our hearts no longer fear. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. That all who suffer be relieved, those who are sick be healed, the dying be comforted, and the grieving endure in hope through the resurrection of our Lord. Lord, this day we especially pray for Paul and Audrey, Lorraine and Gary, for Pat, and for all that we name in the peace of our own soul. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord. Lord, have mercy. That we be a people of generous hearts, sharing what we have with those in need and supporting the work of the kingdom near and far. That many be brought to know Jesus Christ through the witness of his, holy, his word and spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord. Lord, have mercy. That we be slow to judge others and quick to forgive in Christ's name. And that we bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the call to love one another and that we regularly offer prayers, supplications, and intercessions for all as they have need. Lord, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. In your hands, O Lord, we commend ourselves, those on whose behalf we have prayed, and for all those in any need, trusting that your mercy will supply us all things needful and keep us from all things harmful through Jesus Christ. Lord, have mercy. Amen. We continue on with the service of the sacrament. The Lord be with you. 
Lift up your hearts. Let us, give, let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who overcame the assaults of the devil and gave his life as a ransom for many that with cleansed hearts we might be prepared joyfully to celebrate the Paschal Feast in sincerity, in sincerity and truth. Therefore, with angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sins and be our Savior. With repentant joy we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers. Deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship. With the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Together we pray the prayer he taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
please rise. And now this true body and true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in body and soul to life everlasting. Depart and live in His peace. Amen. And we pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith towards you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Receive this blessing of our Lord. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May he look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. Let's remain standing for our closing. May be seated. Thank you again for joining us on this beautiful night in February to receive the good and gracious gifts of God and to thank and praise Him for those gifts. Speaking of gifts, what about birthdays? Any birthdays this week? Gail? Uh, Ethan, what's your little brother's name? Evan. Evan. I'm sorry, Evan. Evan's birthday. How old are you, Evan? How how you gonna be? How old is birthday? Do what? Six. 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 All right, Gail and Evan. <laughs> I know better. God is blessing with eighty-four years. Eighty-four years. God's blessings to that. <laughs> Baptismal birthdays. Baptismal birthdays. If you don't know your baptismal birthday, call us in the office. We will help you find it. Anniversaries. Anniversaries at the end of the month here. Oh, the Ropers. 16th of February. 16th of February. How many years? 41. 41. Good for you. God blessings on that. 41 years. No comment. <laughs> no comment. All right. We leave by singing happy birthday, dear friends. God's blessings on your week.